Sharon Bill, welcome to my YouTube channel. I thought today to be a good opportunity to talk to you about scales, or when I say scales, I mean scales, arpeggios, all sorts of technical exercises when you're doing your music practice. And I think that scales, etc., they do get a really bad rap, and we see them as a, an unpleasant, necessary evil before we get to the main event, which is then practicing your pieces. And that's kind of an imbalanced approach really because scales are really, really important in their own right. And not just they are really important, but they're not necessarily unpleasant. Once you get the notes under your fingers, there are lots and lots and lots of benefits and they're not um, an unpleasant time of practice. And so the first benefit that I can think of when you're practicing scales and arpeggios is finger strength. So from a pianist's point of view, of course, you are really building up your finger strength like a gym workout. You've got to build up these muscles gradually and then you've got to keep them supple. So you're building up finger strength and you're building up dexterity. That's true of any instrument. But also, if you think about, for example, a wind instrument, say if you're doing your flute scales, you're also building up your diaphragm strength, you're building up your muscles there, you're building up your embouchure technique, and also you're getting the note formation sorted so that you've got these notes in your repertoire as you're practicing them, and then they're all ready for you in the bag when you start playing your pieces. Another idea of building up technique is to play your scales and arpeggios in different ways. So you can play them loud, you can play them quiet, you can play them legato, you can play them staccato, and that way you're ringing out the changes, making your practice a little bit more varied. And also when you come to play these techniques in your pieces, they're already in your fingers, already in your embouchure, uh, you've got those techniques in place ready to go. If it is that you're struggling to get the notes first of all, if you're a pianist, if you go to my playlist, I've um, got the, all the major scales, all the minor uh, scales and arpeggios for both as well. And you can literally see me playing them and demonstrating the fingering at my piano, it's my old piano actually. So do have a look at the scales playlists, the arpeggio playlists, to get a bit of help just getting the notes under your fingers there, first of all. There are scale books as well that you can refer to that tell you everything you need to know. These are great as a starting point, but as soon as you can, you need to get them from memory, really. It's actually easier that way as well. This is the new ABRSM scale book that I use for my teaching. However, I must admit, I did... I did dig this one out just for posterity. This is my old ABRSM scale book. In fact, it's associated board, uh, old, old logo. Uh, this is the one I used when I was about 16. In fact, it's starting to smell a bit old, but musty as well. But that's the one I go to personally as well. There, we'll come to the hand on in a moment. And so if you're struggling with a particular scale, one little technique that I've found that is really, really helpful, which um, I'm not quite sure why it works, but if you play them dotted, so if you dot the rhythms long, short, long, short, long, and then you go back to regular even rhythms, somehow it irons out the mistakes. I think it sort of practices in a pause rather than you playing pauses uh, 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 sort of random, really. It really does make a difference, so have a go with that. If you think you've got your scales super, super licked, then just test yourself and try them with the metronome, building up the metronome speed, because the metronome tells no lies and it won't wait for you. And if you think you really know them, just try it with the metronome and any little insecurities come bubbling to the surface and you realise sometimes you've got a bit more practice to do. And then you could try with the metronome but by changing out where the accents are as well, so you're accenting every two beats, or so accent one, accent three, or you can accent on the off beats, accent two, accent four, and so on. So that really does sort of bring out any little insecurities to see if you know those scales. Are they really red hot or not quite as good as you thought? Once you've got scales under your fingers, it's a really good opportunity to uh, just spot check your posture because now you're no longer thinking about the notes that you're playing, you're just rattling through the scales or the arpeggios. And it's a good time to just sort of stop and think, well, hold on a moment, 
Am I sitting correctly? Am I slouching? Am I straight? Um, you know, is my breathing correct? If you're a pianist, I'll do a little diagram, I'll put it on screen for you. You can tell that I am not the artist in this family. However, it just shows all of the things that you should be thinking about if you're sitting at your piano. Then we haven't finished. That's only the start of why scales are good for you. Then we get onto the really good stuff because once you've got your scales under your fingers and you know what sharps and flats you need to be playing and you can rattle them up and down without too much trouble, then you gain an understanding of what it is that you're playing, the tonality of the music that you're playing. You can see how it relates to your scale patterns and you start to understand the key structure and the harmony. A lot of pieces that you play will have lots and lots of scale passages and they'll have lots and lots of arpeggio shapes as well. And so you'll be, already have those shapes under your fingers when you come to play the music. So the shapes will be there under your fingers and also you'll understand the sort of the structure of the piece that you're playing as well. We're still not finished yet though, because actually once you get going on your scales, you'll find that it's actually a really calming exercise for you personally. There is nothing better than just rattling up and down the scales if you're feeling a little bit out of sorts, because as you're rattling up and down the scales or the arpeggios and the notes are safe, your brain is now free to roam free and it's really, really good therapy and so if you're in a bad mood, not that I ever am, of course, uh, but if you're feeling like a little out of sorts, if you sort of bash it out on the piano, whatever instrument you're playing, you can just rattle it out of your system and you'll find perhaps that the scales start off pretty loud. And then as you calm down and just work it out of your system, they start to quieten down and the seas begin to calm. <laughs> seas as in rough seas, not seas on the piano, pardon the pun and you'll find that it's really, really good therapy. There's nothing better for that. And sometimes, actually, you know, we're not machines. We are human beings with emotions, and sometimes you're supposed to be sitting to do some piano practice, but you're just not in the right headspace at all, and you can't concentrate on the pieces, and it's just, you're just not gonna make good progress. Then I would suggest don't do nothing, play some scales, because actually, it's still good practice. If you did nothing but play scales for a month, it would not be time wasted. And so if you're really feeling like, I'm just not in the zone for these pieces, I can't concentrate, just do some scales as well. It's really good practice. You're not wasting the time and you'll still get that sense of satisfaction from knowing you're getting something done. At least you're not doing nothing and it just helps you to work these things through. And then, if you think you've done everything you possibly can and you've done all the scales, uh, I mean, there's a lifetime's work really. You can then go on to um, various technical exercises. If you're a pianist, I do recommend the Hanon technical exercise. And they're sort of scale passages, but it just changes it up a bit. So you're working in thirds and then scales or uh, just doing various different sort of turnarounds and stretches. There are particular exercises to strengthen finger four or so on. Because think about it, scale literally means step. It means, uh, there are lots of meanings to the word scale, but in this context, we're not talking about fish scales or weighing scales. We're talking about scales where it's literally referring to steps like the, the rungs on a ladder. And so you are literally stepping up your instrument step by step. And so this changes it out where you perhaps kind of miss a rung here and there as it were as well. And as you're stepping up and down your instrument, you are becoming so familiar with your instrument as you just keep stepping up and down the scales in whatever form. And then you are sort of becoming more at one with the instrument that you're playing as well. And so, you know, there's a lifetime's work there. So don't think just two minute scales and it's job done. However, try and see it as um, a good thing. It's a positive, it's actually quite pleasant. Once you've got the notes under your fingers, try and change your mindset if you haven't already. And you can actually find that you can actually begin to love scales. So, uh, I do hope that's encouraging to you. See you next time. Bye.